Hi, I'm Adrian, and in today's video, I'm taking over Eric's channel to jump in and redesign his website for him. I'm going to time lapse this so you can view what I've done in an hour or two over just a few minutes, as well as my thinking behind the process of creating a brand new website for Eric. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And to start off with, let's have a look at his old design to see what it looks like and how we can improve it. Here is the current design for Eric. It's called Programming with Eric, like his YouTube channel, and it's very content driven. You start off immediately with the blog articles, and a lot of them are also view related. So immediately I get some ideas about how I'm going Going to structure a new design for him here. We've got two aspects for this. We've got the menu here on the left hand side and we've got all the items here on the right hand side. But there aren't any image previews or images in general so it's sort of an area where I think I can improve on. A lot of the colors here are also using just those fundamental blues for links and blacks for text and I think we can pull in some better colors to use for the new design as well. If we click through to a page, we get a preview of what it is. So it usually links back to the YouTube channel, but we also have a lot of social icons here on the right hand side. And they're also here on the left hand side on the menu too. We do have a lot of the pages requiring a newsletter sign up where you get free content. Well, not requiring, but essentially it's there as a call to action. And you do get a number of cool stuff like free testing cheat sheets and much more. So it is one of those call to actions that we probably want to engage more people to utilize. We have a few other pages here. I think, let's see, we've got the about page. And on the about page, you get a little bit more information about Eric as well as how to connect with him on Twitter and stuff like that. So being able to highlight maybe some of those socials and linking back to the YouTube channel, I think would be a great idea. Otherwise, I'm thinking that maybe if we can incorporate more of the actual elements he's teaching into the website design, that should be really cool. So let's actually jump into creating a new design. To start off with, I've created a bit of a style guide here, which is just based on Vu and ideas I had about what their button designs are and what the colors are. And we're gonna use this as the template here for the design of the website, because I noticed that there's a lot of Vu content that Eric is doing. With this design, I'm gonna start off with the button that I've created. I've created a hover state for the button as well as an active and inactive state. And using that, I can extrapolate it into a navigation bar that really stands out. In this case, I've done the navigation bar just to the very top right, which is the default that most websites use, with the home being the active state and the other buttons being the inactive state. Then I've also done a bit of a call to action there for the YouTube channel, which is more prominent by being the red color there. And this makes it stand out and essentially something that people are more likely to click, seeing that a lot of the content that Eric does is on the YouTube channel. The next thing I've done is put in his name there with his channel name, essentially. It's Programming with Eric. There isn't a particular logo at this point in time. So I think the text there itself is enough to get this website looking good. Then we move on to the hero section. For the hero section, we need a good image. And I found this really nice one of Eric where he's waving. And I'm going to use this in reference with the colors of Vu to sort of create something that works a little bit better here because the image is almost square. And for a lot of hero images, we need something that's very wide. So when you're stuck trying to do this, sometimes what you need to do is add a bit of a linear gradient to make that image seem like it's longer than it actually is. But in fact, it actually is only using up maybe one side of the hero image. So in this case, what I'm doing is grabbing the two main colors from Vu and blending them together. I'm adding a little bit of an overlay there. And this overlay starts at the end of the image. So it looks like it's just fading out. This is pretty much perfect and I'm happy with this hero image now as it is because it's using those colors and it's blending in quite nicely. Next, I grab the actual logo of Vu and I try and overlay it onto the hero image there just to make that hero image a little bit more dynamic. And I think the sort of way that the image with him waving there and the logo and the angles work really nicely. Then I'm thinking about possibly putting in the blog sections to sort of overlap as call to actions on top of the header. And this might work as with like a negative margin or something like that, just so that the next section flows in quite nicely. But I'm not too sure yet about that. So let's jump back into the header section and actually create some text for that. 
So with the text, I'm going to do something like welcome. Here is some VU encoding content. And this will be nice and simple. But for anyone landing on this page, you want to know immediately what it's about. And the core concepts here are about programming, coding and VU. The only other thing that I'm going to put onto this hero section is a nice call to action. This is always really important. And in this case, I'm going to do the call to action to view the actual course. With that more or less done, let's copy out and finish out the blog section here. We've mainly normally three feature items being in, well, essentially a nice grid there. The columns then can collapse if you're on a mobile view, but I think that looks quite good. And I'm also going to give it a title of blog. Finally, I also want to create some YouTube clips here because there are a lot of YouTube videos that Eric does release. And I think it'd be nice if they were represented on the home page and even maybe before the blog section. So I've just put them here, almost flowing through to the blog section, but overlapping with the hero image. And we can actually add thumbnails, I suppose there, but for the time being, I've just labeled them with colors. Then I'm going to fill out the blog section here with real content to see what that looks like. And so far, I'm pretty happy with the layout here because it follows very much what I've done in the wireframe originally on my iPad. Next, I try to bring up some of the social icons that we've got on the main website just here to the website. The main ones here being Twitter and GitHub. I don't think many people use an RSS feed and some of the other ones I saw on there. I think having too many of them sometimes is a little bit overwhelming for people and it takes away from what they're trying to do. So in this case, I've just used the Twitter one and the GitHub one and I've moved the navigation off a little bit to the left here to make room for them. Then I've just moved about the high and welcome section just so it's more centered and more inviting. And I think that covers the header more or less. So let's move on and try and create the next section for the website, which is the courses section. And to do that, I'm going to actually increase the size of this frame. And sometimes certain elements in Figma here just don't like to be resized. So I'm just adjusting them so that they're aligned properly. So here I'm moving into the next part and I'm considering how I'm going to create this course section because I want it to be interesting. So I'm going to still try and keep it consistent with the blog section with a little bit of the title there and some buttons and styling, but I also want it to be unique so that you feel like you're getting real course content, whether that's on YouTube or whether it's a paid course, it needs to be dynamic, but interesting. I also want to use a little bit of that VU design where you've got the different colors overlapping. So here I've actually pulled in the logo of VU and put in two square boxes with those curved corners to represent the courses layout there. We can then overlay maybe a small video there or something like that. But since I'm already putting the icon in front of courses, I might as well put also an icon in front of blogs to keep things consistent. I have a look at different colors to see how we can do the video that might play in the background, but I'm happy with the two colors already as they are. And let's actually put in some content here to introduce the VU course. So what I'm going to do is fill this out with just some example content I'm making up like VU fundamentals with learn how to do fundamentals in VU. This sort of describes the course, but another thing that's good is to show some example chapters of the course. So I actually create some icons here from Font Awesome. I pull them in using the same sort of coloring and I make them a little bit more bold so they stand out and I give an introduction to the very first part of the course because most courses start with an introduction. And then I do a line break between each section here and create a couple more course sections or course chapters. And this really feels like you get to preview the course. This might even be a good example of where you could put in a free preview of the course to get people interested in signing up. So that's why I create the sign up button immediately underneath it, as well as maybe viewing the full course if there's more modules in this course as well. And I think that's a really good example here for a course layout and pretty much has everything that we need to get it up and running. This only does the VU fundamentals for beginners essentially. So it's always good to also have one maybe for a more advanced user. So I've created one more here below called VU Intermediate. And this one can have things like styled components or created functional components, something that draws in the other side of the crowd who now know VU fundamentals, but while looking to learn a little bit more. This way, we've got the courses section covered. I'm pretty happy with that. And we can move on to the next section. And the next section is just about done. It's just the footer section here. I noticed that in the main site, we did have an area there for the, uh, the newsletter. 
So in the footer section, I'm thinking I'll add in the newsletter and just make that stand out. But before I go there, let's actually customize some of these YouTube play buttons all around the design because we do have a lot of videos in this section. And I think they're not well represented. And if we're going to add maybe a background image or something like that, we should have a play button on top of them. So you realize that you're clicking through to a video and it makes it more consistent. So I think the play button here I've used on Font Awesome looks quite good. I'm going to add a couple of icons and stuff all around now that we're using more of these Font Awesome icons and Vue icons just to make the design look more fleshed out and consistent all the way throughout. For this section, again, I'm going to copy over the blog section with a nice icon here from Font Awesome, as well as adding in the title here, which is the newsletter section. And as part of this, the right icon sometimes is hard to find. I've just used this one like a paper plane because it's sort of like sending you mail. I think that's a good one to use in this case. I also copy out some text to make this section look okay, but realistically we need a area here for the inputs. So for the inputs, I'm gonna reuse the design we've got for the buttons. That's probably the closest we can use. And I'm gonna place them here maybe on the right hand side and play around with the sizing. I think that sometimes email addresses and names can be particularly long so having them use up the full half width of that section should be okay. And finally I'm just going to add in a copyright section here at the very bottom. And I think that pretty much covers our entire design here. And a lot of it is using columns so they should be easy enough to wrap for mobile. The difficult part of actually creating a design is now done, but let's take a quick review of what we have so far and some of the thoughts I had after immediately creating it. To start off with, let's have a look at the main header section here. We start with programming with Eric. He doesn't have a logo, but this is sort of his catchphrase that's also on his YouTube channel, and this fits in quite well for his website. The menu I've made a little bit more prominent before it was on the left hand side and this time because it's here at the top you can see it very clearly. You can see which item you're on with this nice white background on this darker version of the navigation and you've also got the socials such as the YouTube channel, Twitter and GitHub. I've reduced some of the socials there because these are the main ones people are viewing and you don't want to overload people with too many socials. Also, the fact that most of the content is going back to the YouTube channel, it's a good place to promote at the very top of the navigation there. Next, we've got the hero image and I picked out quite a few different images and decided that the one that works the most here is with Eric waving. It's almost like he's saying hello and we've got this nice text saying welcome, learn view and how to code, which I think is a great introduction. You immediately have a call to action here, which is to view his courses, which should scroll you down to that section. Otherwise, you also have the most latest videos that he's released on YouTube, which can be pulled in an API fashion here and you can immediately have something to interact with. As we scroll down on the page here, we get a little bit of his blog, which is something that he does quite often, which goes back to either YouTube or a greater write-up of some of his courses as well. So this sort of has a few items that immediately is dynamic and you can view every time you visit his site. Then as you scroll further down, you get his courses. Now the courses before weren't really prominent on the website and I think this is a great place to be able to put them because after you've read the most interesting articles, you wanna know more about Vue and fundamentals, immediately you can have a look at some examples of what the course might offer. So like an introduction or installing Vue. This sort of engages you to maybe want to purchase the full course or sign up. And for those people that might not already be beginners, you also have the advanced version here, which gets a little bit more information about doing maybe more interesting things in Vue. So both of these will cater to different audiences and this is a good thing to be able to do. Both of these again have their call to action to view the course and to sign up. Of course if there are more courses we can have a separate page. The final thing that I notice on his website here is the newsletter sign up. I've always put this at the bottom or at the very top of websites, usually at the bottom, simply because if this is content you're interested in or you want to get updates on it, a newsletter is a great way to be able to do that. And most creators these days don't spam you with lots and lots of stuff, only when they release new interesting content. So I've just put this here into the footer section. I think that works really well with a small copyright. And that's more or less the website design pretty much done.